Fit for Life Radio, episode number 96, What to Eat. I, f- I feel like we're always so close to 100. It's never going to come. <laughs> like, we've, like we've been the same distance for so long. 101 is going to be sad. It is, but then, then we get to look forward to it. Mm-hmm. Is 200 as big as 100? Or is it just like 500? The- I mean, we could just record a three-minute episode every day. So I guess really they, they can technically... They can, but I wouldn't feel good about Not it. Not mean as much. Nah. <clears throat> We've arrived to part three. So we had... Why we eat. How we eat. And now... What we eat. So this is where most people start. We purposely did not start here. Hopefully, if you haven't, go back and listen to the last two episodes on us addressing eating and really the changes you need to work on making to make it last, you know, healthy eating habits, better nutrition. And if you only adjust the what we eat, it normally doesn't last because there's lots of things that end up affecting Yeah, with the the who or the who. The 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 why. We don't advocate that. But and then a good example of that is when people do like a uh, like I'm gonna go all in and they do like whole thirty or whatever whatever they decide to do, and then two weeks later, they're just doing exactly what they were doing before because they address the what but didn't address anything else. Yeah, and we all know you know how often that happens. I'm sure either you know people listening or somebody they know has done that multiple times and it just it never really sticks. And with the what we eat. It's tough because it, it kind of goes both ways as being helpful and hurtful. So like we started to lean into last episode, if you, what you do eat is also going to affect the how and the why a little bit, right? If you're eating a food that's highly processed, highly addictive, easy to overeat, overconsume, that may then make you eat more faster mm-hmm. and less mindful, which is you know the how we're eating. So eating foods that are more make you more filling, or you have to chew more. Like I talked about, what was the example I used? Um, oh, the rice, right? Yeah. Where yeah. like the rice cake compared to the regular rice, like yeah, it's, there's a lot more chewing. Makes so you have to chew slower, and, and it's dry compared to regular rice. Yeah, so it affects the how you eat some, right? So one thing a lot of people hope to accomplish oh i'm only going to eat you know quote unquote these, healthy foods these four <laughs> foods only grown within three miles of the coast yeah and, okay and so you create these very and yeah maybe your super strict rules provide all whole, whole foods which are going to help in that they're going to be harder to overeat they're going to force you to eat slower but what also happens with that and this is why ultimately the real clean, quick answer here is 100%, per, you know, quote unquote, perfect with your nutrition is probably, and they've done studies on this, not ideal, not, no. not optimal because you're, you're ignoring the food environment that the is The world there, around us. Unless you're, you know, living like... Yeah, if you live in the woods or whatever on your own, mm-hmm. cool. It's, like you can do that because you don't have Skittles, you know, in the grocery store when corner, you check out yeah. every day. So by telling yourself that a lot of this other stuff is completely off limits, quote unquote bad, and trying to avoid it typically leads to binging on it. And and you end up eating more than you would have if you just allowed yourself a little bit, or just mentally allowed yourself nothing off limits but then you kind of just eat it when you want it and don't kind of daydream about it so to speak a lot of times when we make something off limits we think we want it more than we actually do and then we do. build it up in our heads for days or hours or whatever and then that usually leads to binging yeah so we'll get that off the table right now and like 100% spartan diet is not ideal not optimal now what is so what do we eat majority whole unprocessed foods that you enjoy that's gonna be your best bet you know and don't make anything off limits that so that way mentally you're not um playing that restriction good bad game you want to think of food less with the light switch good bad and more 
as a spectrum of eat more of, eat some of, eat less of. And that's also we've talked about before. You could also call it like the red light, the stoplight approach. Mm-hmm. So green light, yellow light, red light. So your green light foods are the foods that are uh, have a high nutrition, you do enjoy, and they're easy to consume in appropriate amounts, right? Yeah. Those are going to be your green light foods. going to be a little more filling and not... Yeah. So for a lot of people, those end up being like fruits and veggies and lean proteins and whole grains and... Then your yellow light foods, right? Th- those could be quote unquote nutrient dense, super healthy foods, but they just way easier to eat. They could maybe be way easier to eat, right? You may find that you love really love barbecue, right? Um, so it's a little bit fattier meat. There's some nutrition there and micro nutrients, uh, but it's very ca- calorically dense and easy um, to eat. It may be very of- palatable in, in your mouth and delicious and easy to eat a ton more. So it might be a yellow light food right Um, and then you have foods you just can't control and these typically do tend to be highly processed foods like so your red light food so those are gonna be like special treat foods ice creams cookies mm -hmm. Uh, i know a common one all the above that's relatable so that a lot of people view yes this is a good food how is this a red light food and it is for me peanut butter right and for one peanut butter is don't don't get me started pretty processed right it is very processed because think about it especially if we take something like almond butter. Um, yeah, look at almonds. They all individually come in these shells, and if you didn't have the tools to crack them, you're not, you're not getting very many yeah, almonds. Yeah, you're going right? to eat like three almonds before um, you're just done with it. And then even peanuts. Okay, well, you have to get those out of the shell. But, so obviously with peanut butter, well, they're already shelled. And then now, besides having to actually chew them, it's basically pureed. So then it's easier to consume more of it at once. Uh, and then they add oil they add oils and a little and sugar salt and sugar and then so those little tweaks make it even in more hyper palatable which you can notice by that's the difference of yeah go get the all natural peanut butter and then get the jiffy way different taste and you're, you're going to be like most people want the jiffy right mm-hmm. um so yeah that's a food that's a perfect example that could be a red light food for some people um not if most people are being honest it's definitely normally not a green light food no <laughs> i don't know anyone that can, can just have one tablespoon and it's just um and, and one actual tablespoon usually it's like a big spoon yeah. full that's 350 400 calories yep so yeah what do we eat majority whole unprocessed foods don't make anything off limits but have a good idea of your spectrum of eat more eat some eat less try not to label foods as good or bad and really when it comes down to it, you're just trying to incorporate a mix of proteins, veggies, carbohydrates, fats, so all the macronutrients. All the things you need. Um, and you want to be able to manage your, your intake, right? So, and along with that, make your taste buds happy, right? Yeah. So if someone's like, I love broccoli you know which can fit in great but you just don't enjoy eating it right you don't have to force yourself to eat it there's like there's so many other things you can do hundreds yeah other normal viable veggie options. i think that is important i think people feel like they need to eat certain foods mm-hmm. because i don't someone said it was a superfood or you got to have this to do you know to burn body fat but really at the end of the day liking the foods you eat is important because if you don't like them you're not going to be consistent with eating them. Yeah. And then it's going to feel like torture and you're going to eventually resort back to what you're old. And then it's a negative association with a food and like that whole experience of eating becomes negative. And again, you're going to be more likely to grab something that makes you feel good. You know, a hyper palatable food, your, again, like your ice cream or cookies Mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. We're just way more likely to reach for that. Whereas if you're having something that you're like, damn, I really enjoy that. Then you're having a good experience and you don't feel like you need something else. Yeah. To kind of fill that. And with that, with the what comes, you know, and also at the first, yeah, the first time you eat something, it may, you may not love it, but also give, give things a more than one chance. chance. Yeah. And maybe try different recipes or different preparation. It it took me years to like salmon. Mm -hmm. I had it, it probably like five years of trying it multiple times until I was like, damn, all right, this is actually good. Because again, when you try something for the first time, you're, 
palate just maybe in a different yeah. place if you're used to eating a lot of processed foods or something. And mentally, you could be going into it like, I'm not going to like this. Exactly. And that's going to affect. Yeah, there's a good chance you're not going to like it if you already think that you're not. So, and now I love salmon and, you know, I don't eat it super often, but I try like once a week mm-hmm. um, and I love it. So, and I think people notice as they change their eating habits, like their palate does change, you know, and a lot of people will say that, you know, they hadn't had a lot of processed food and then they had like a sweet tea that they Mm -hmm. used to love and they can't drink it because it's way too sweet, you know, and things change in that direction too, because now you're used to, you know, something that's not pumped full of sugar or other foods that add, you know, even more fat too. So that always will happen. So you have to give yourself a little grace period if you do make changes to your nutrition. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, again, with the what we're eating, it's important, but it's kind of not the most important. No. In the short term, you can get great gains or losses or whatever you're you're looking for. But again, if you don't address the how and the why long term, it's just not going to matter. You know, you're going to eventually fall for some of, you know, if you're stressed and emotional eating and if you're eating fast and, and distracted, even with, you know, great food choices, you're eventually, you're going to overeat, going to cave. Dude, I can wolf down some eat. food if I'm distracted. Even it could be yeah. very whole foods. It could be beef and potatoes and I could destroy it yeah. if I'm distracted because you're not listening to if you're hungry or not, you know, you're watching TV. Mm-hmm. So yeah, even with whole foods, you can still really overdo it. Yep. So that's. Because we also typically, even with whole foods, don't eat them, most people, plain, right? So even oh, yeah. spices and flavorings and sauces and dressings. They make it more palatable. They make it all more palatable. Com- combining things, right? Mm-hmm. If you eat just ground beef by itself. You'll hit a limit and you'll be like, all right, I'm done. If you eat just rice by itself, they're both okay, right? But you're not going to you know, you're you're not start a restaurant it. with yeah. that. But then you combine them. Right, mm-hmm. and you're making me hungry. They're really good, you know. That combination of these different textures and and, and then fats and carbs mm-hmm. and and it's more and just so the science of it, right? Your brain and gut is connected, so there's these nerves in your stomach that talk to your b- brain, and it senses when there's say protein, fat, and carbohydrates all together, and it mm-hmm. kind of ding, ding, ding. Yep. So if one of those elements isn't there, you don't get the same. Um, response, right? And that's where for a lot of people sometimes having um, that's why just having say protein and fat only meals versus say protein and carb only meals can work because it's they're not as hyper palatable. Um, so that's you know an approach that some people do. Again that starts get, getting nitpicky but it's, it shows like that powerful effect of get yeah, delicious food, even when we're combining whole foods, you know, can still have that effect. And these spices and flavorings and, and all this, it's going to make it taste a little more enticing. Yeah. Which is okay. Yeah. And that's where, and this comes down to trade offs, right? Typically, people who want to be like really lean leader and then need it for health purposes or for a sport, um, tend to eat more basic plain foods, right? Because it's the trade-off of, oh, it's easier to eat the proper portions that I need for this goal without the food, you know, basically with the food not tasting as good, yeah. you know? So they'll have, you have more plain meals, less dressings and sauces and stuff like that. Because when you're done, you're done, mm-hmm. you know? And, and you don't really want or need anymore. And sometimes that's a little more filling too, the foods that they're going to eat yeah, because there isn't all the, the fluff, the sauces and, and all of that. Yep. So take it in. That's it. I mean, I, I wish it could be more complicated. It's, you know, now obviously there's so, someone thinking, well, I just read a book that said, you know, all car, a keto book that said not to eat carbs. You know, I read Whole30. Because insulin makes you fat. And it said not to eat dairy or, you know, grains. Um, look, all these different things for the most part. It's most people don't need to, to worry about that stuff. No. You know, if you know, eat something, if you feel bad, don't eat it. Don't, again. don't eat it. Um, if it, but for the most part, as far as like your health, maintaining a certain body composition, um, 
Yeah, for the most you know, part, you'll don't. know if you have a food allergy, a legit. Food oh, allergy. for sure. <laughs> and it, and something I think that happens a lot is now because people are very aware of gluten and mm -hmm. and dairy. Those are kind of the two big ones. I think that people stress themselves out eating them. Like they're so worried, yeah. and then they have something that has gluten in it, and they freak out, and then have. Yeah, and then you get like an upset well, stomach. Yeah, you have poor well, digestion. Well, your stomach's upset because you digested food poorly because you were stressed while yeah. you were eating it. Again, there's that connection, right? So if Absolutely. you're stressed, your brain signaling signals to your stomach. Because yeah, we evolved it. Didn't, if you ate a mushroom or leaf that was poisonous and it made you feel bad, then it's, your brain learns from that, right? Yeah, like don't do that again. Don't do that again. But we can almost take something completely benign, and if you tell your if you Tell yourself it's Tell bad. yourself enough that this is bad. You're essentially creating that stimulus, right? And, it, and then that's how your body will respond. Yep. Um, so that's why. So yeah, keep that in mind with those types of things. And foods. that comes back to how we eat. That's yeah. why you want to eat undistracted, unstressed, so that you can give yourself the best chance for good digestion yeah. by being calm and relaxed. Exactly. And um, if you are calm, relaxed, aware, and something really wrecks your stomach, then you know. Maybe I shouldn't eat that again, mm -hmm. you know? But if you're so distracted, you'll never know truly why your stomach yeah. was upset. The other thing with that, too, is, you know, certain types of food, our body, the more we eat it, it creates enzymes that help digest it, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, if you haven't touched a grain or dairy in four years and you have some. And you have a loaf of bread. <laughs> your, your digestion may not be as great. But literally, okay, if you keep introducing it, your body's going to create enzymes to help digest those foods yes. better. Um, and then you'll be fine. And then, so then it's up to you. Like, there is lots of nutrition maybe in those foods. And if you, and they may be tasty and you enjoy them. And again, like we said, they could be a green light food or eat more of food for you. So instead of like, everyone now, like, fear mongers everything to where you'd be like what do i even eat yeah because when me meat's bad plants are bad dairy's bad grains yeah. are bad fruit, fruit makes you fat <laughs> yeah like so what like what do you even eat and if you listen to all of that you're gonna be afraid to mm -hmm. eat anything but the reality is it should be the kind of the opposite actually humans are very um we're resilient resilient and, and there's probably more things we can eat than less mm -hmm. so instead of approaching it with super fear and like minimal options it's probably better to have more options more options and be more optimistic mm -hmm. and then you know maybe there's a few few that you don't um think you know then go from there if you know me you know i'm always on the run up early and home late so having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me what is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop, mixed in water, once a day, and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process, so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run up early and home late, so having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. 
Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop mixed in water once a day and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. So you're just going to set yourself up for more success because you'll have more options. You'll be more optimistic and less stressed. And yeah, you'll find the foods you like, right? Um, I know like me, I don't like a ton of variety. And I've always been like that since I was younger. But I, I still kind of eat a wide t- range of foods, right? I've never eliminated a ton like of, of food groups, right? Yeah. Like I'll eat some fruit. I'll eat. Some veggie. Now, mm-hmm. the veggies I eat the most are like potatoes, right? So, you know, <laughs> um, which is, you know, the fun. starchiest veggie that exists. But I'm also aware of my total portions and needs and it fit, mm-hmm. fits in, right? So, you know, I eat animal protein and some dairy and um, gra- uh, grains, you know, but my grains, I prefer white rice and sourdough bread and, mm-hmm. um, you know, someone's ha- ha- every now and then I'll get a pizza, which... There's a gluten grain, mm. you know, so... We're getting pizza this weekend. Yeah. I'm ready. Watching football? No. Nah. <laughs> Watching Harry Potter? <laughs> um, so, again, yes. I'm not saying that gluten allergies and dairy allergies... Because they do real, exist and they're a thing. You just don't enjoy those foods. Yeah. And you, yeah, you, like, you don't have to eat But them. just don't go into it stressed mm-hmm. if you don't already really know that, like, yeah. this is not for me. Because then you're setting yourself up to not be able to eat something. And the main takeaway is... And anecdotally, and seen, there's been studies on this, the more restriction you go in with trying to have, the more likely it is you end up binging and creating an environment that's like this seesaw. Effect. Yeah, and that's maybe worse than when you first made some changes. Mm-hmm. So even if you go in and just mentally tell yourself everything's available, but you're following a maybe smaller set of food rules, it's still going to be more beneficial to not have this like off limit yeah. list. Um, Cause then you'll find, you know, Hey, Oh, I can't have that if I want it, but I don't really want it. It's not worth it today. But then if it's completely off limits, next thing you know, you have a whole Instagram page dedicated to having this food, you, to following this food you can't have. Right. Mm-hmm. And the reality is you wouldn't even eat it that much or want it that much. But now, cause you can't have it. It's That's all, all, you, all you can think all about. You can think about. Just take a bite. Mm-hmm. Just have one Oreo. Nah. Maybe five. Twelve. So that is one thing I've learned too. So for me, it's easier oftentimes to not have have something at all than to just have one of them. I agree. I'm the same way. So, and which I've talked about before, say with ice cream, right? It's, I'm not going to be able to just have a, what's like a serving, like a quarter, a quarter of a cup. cup. <laughs> Right? So, That's one big spoonful, truthfully. Nah, man. I'd just rather not, ha- so, you know, not have the ice cream. But then when I do want to have it... You're going to eat the pint. I'm going to eat the pint. Yeah. Right? So, again, I'm not saying it's off limits, but I know I'm not going to enjoy just having a quarter cup of it. And portioning that out every day is going to be, like, torture. Yeah. It's literally easier not to have it on my brain, on my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when I do, I can just go until I'm full. Yeah. And you just do that less often than I didn't do that last time though. No, I've been so dude. I haven't been like that in forever. We went when we were in Outer Banks. Oh, we went to the ice cream shop, and Bro, you, like you went in, you got like, <laughs> well, so it's like a frozen course, yogurt place. All right, yeah, so and they had the knows. cups. So of course it's like I'm getting the biggest. He got cup. the biggest cup. I saw Will get the smallest one, and I was like, because I've made that mistake so many times. You knew you made a mistake. In my you? head, I was like, I should do that, but I can't. My, my <laughs> ego won't let me. So he got the biggest cup, completely filled it up. And then, and then added everyone stuff. Was, everyone was getting ice cream sandwiches. And so, of course, he got an ice cream sandwich. And we got an ice cream sandwich. 
Those were good, by the way. Then I got about halfway through. And then it wasn't just Froyo, right? It was gelato. Mm. So it's dense. So it's got the eggs. Dense. and Yeah. So I'm getting through, calorie-wise, dense. I'm getting through my ice cream, and I notice if I've, like, finished, like, I'm not going to have room for this ice cream sandwich. <laughs> so I start eating the ice cream sandwich about halfway through the ice cream, too. But then, and then these ice cream sandwiches are premium, right? They're legit. <laughs> I mean, they're, like, these... Dense cookies, dense ice cream, and I'm getting through my ice cream sandwich, and I'm just like, I'm not going to, I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel full. And this was after dinner, too. Yeah, we already ate. And then it's an internal battle where I knew I'm done, but I, I couldn't. I, but your ego wouldn't And normally you. I'm good now about being done. Nah. But then it's also. The peer pressure. Here's the factors, right? You spent money on it. Yep. Which we just talked about, like you get, you can't do that, right? <laughs> uh, so you know, you're always learning, y'all. So, um, <laughs> that, and you're just like, and normally too, I haven't uh, had premium ice cream like that in a while, and I'm just, and then and it's good, it was yeah. Good. And then everybody around you is eating, mm-hmm. which also plays into it, like your environment, but like then Diego's and, house and ice cream, you know. And in your head, you're still laughing and conversating, or out outwardly. And then inside, you're just you're, you're a, dying, you're bro. <laughs> yeah, you're like, man, like, I'm <laughs> nauseous. Um, and then you keep putting it down. I hit a, I hit a point that night because we had like burgers beforehand that were like fully loaded, and then we went and got the gelato. We had burgers, shrimp. Oh yeah, and shrimp, and potatoes. Potatoes. And then I drinks. Yeah, and then we had ice cream and then ice cream sandwiches. Yeah. I was so miserably full that night. Like it hurt. You know what helps was going for the walk though? Oh my god, yeah. That walk. By the time on the way back, I was feeling a lot better. I still was a little I was stopped up, man. Just the whole inside. Mm-mm-mm. Go for a walk after you, yep, after yep. you eat. <laughs> so we, and yeah, and ice cream's not even off limits for me, but that's it shows all the factors, right? Of when, yeah, you're eat with other people, and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, well, this is um, what what you do. Like, you have a big meal, and let's have dessert, and we're your change of scenery, and you're having um, a, a good time, and yep. It's so it's it's hard. And there's a time and it's place, hard. you know, for it. Like for us, like we, you know, we realize what happened and what was going on, and mm-hmm. you know, we're generally pretty like adherent during the week, and you know, for us. Should we have pushed it that far? Probably not. <laughs> but it happened, and we moved on. And, and we I were used fine. to do that every weekend. Took regret like that. But and then I'm you, glad you I don't do that it. anymore yeah. too. I've been, it's been a while since I felt like that. I, to, same. To where you're, it's not even about you're not. You don't feel guilty for eating that. much. You just feel like garbage you're physically. <laughs> yeah, you hurt. Yeah, like your pain. stomach is full. You like you literally couldn't eat another bite of anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a whole different feeling. There's a little regret involved. Yeah. No guilt, but definitely some regret when you do something like that. Walk it off. Walk it off. Oh, man. Now I know. Either ice cream or ice cream sandwich. You can't do both. I, if you I probably dinner, will, though. If I didn't eat dinner, I could have. Yeah, but then you, you would have felt yeah. a different type of way because you didn't have any protein. I mean, ice cream you knew has some protein. Nah, nah, <laughs> that's like, I mean, it has more than peanut yeah, it's butter. Like trying to get it from peanut butter. Yeah. But, nah, no way. Yeah. So what we eat. Clearly not as important as the other two. Get your other ducks in a row. Now you can, I mean, you can worry about what you eat while you're addressing the other things, but don't have it be your focus. Don't have it be the first thing you work on because generally it's not going to stick around. Yep. You can start with, again, why? 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 Why am I eating? How we're eating. And you can do that simply by, you may, well, what does that even mean? You know, and I get it. Like what we eat, it's a very tangible thing. So... And it's it makes, ex, it's more external, it's right? Like it's yeah. a food that I can see versus how do I feel on the inside, mm-hmm. which is not as. But you can start with just fun. eating slower. I mean, really, that you can start with that. Just eat slower. That's it. Put your fork and down. That's going to help bites. you be more mindful. Eliminate and it. not being distracted, I yeah. think, helps you be more in tune with the why as well. You know, like if you're eating and you realize that you're completely not distracted. But, you know, there's something on your mind, you know, it might be easier to address it. So um, that's, I think, a big one for people is just to don't be distracted and put your fork down in between bites. Mm -hmm. And that will solve a lot. And then when it does come down to 
the what we eat. Again, focus on minimally processed whole foods. Try to eliminate the good versus bad thinking. Yep. Leave everything on the table. Yep. Have more of a spectrum. Eat more. Eat some. Eat less. And then find things you you do enjoy Mm -hmm. within that because that is important and then again like we said giving things multiple chances um and note that you can cook things a completely different way that may change the food for you too so um it is important to to explore and all that yeah and when it comes down to what's a whole food right and prop minimally processed so i mean think of something like you have an apple right that's typically going to be green light yeah obviously a whole food version like that's it that's the apple then you have apple sauce, which may be more yellow light, eat less, mm-hmm. um, or eat some. Obviously, the apple is now pureed down. It's and way be, easier to yeah, eat. Yeah, more calories per bite, easier to eat. Might ha- even have some added sweetener. Some cinnamon. Some, yeah, mm. so spices, stuff like that. Makes it more palatable, but still decent, right? Then you have apple juice, right? Which is going to be more of like the eat less... Super processed, going to have sugar added to it, maybe mm-hmm. some natural flavoring, and yeah, pretty easy to overcome. And will not fill you up. Yeah. No one gets full on apple juice, man. Nobody. Mm-hmm. We could do a whole episode on juice. And that's what you'll see, too, is not just about, oh, it being like Skittles, you know? Yeah. It can, you can, there's lots of foods that are like that. Look at, I mean, let's look at like olive, right? You have the olive. That's the whole food. Yep. You got to chew it. It has a little seed thing in it. You got to chew around that. But then, and then you have olive oil. So now you took this massive amount of olives and pressed them down into just the liquid form. And something that, again, is not very filling mm-hmm. and easy to overeat. And boom. So, yeah, you got to... Processing of food can be yeah. with whole foods, right? So... Because remember, nuts are whole foods too. Mm-hmm. But, but even you, even like a nut that's been shelled, still processed. I would call that a yellow light food personally. Because mm-hmm. they are... Oh, you can just, just whack them back, you can handful, just handful, handful, handful. Eat them so easily. And most people do eat them that way. They'll you know walk by the bag or the bowl and grab a handful. And then you don't even know how many you're eating. But you're, you know, you're probably eating 500 calories and nuts that day without knowing it. So those are definitely yellow light food. Um, we can call nut butter a yellow or a red, just depending on who you are. For me, I don't really care about nut butters, so it would be a yellow light food for me because I don't really partake. Mm-hmm. But um, if you find that you can eat an entire jar of almond butter, yeah, that's probably a red light food for you. And really, so for most people, yeah, like the nuts, the almonds, the cashews. So the whole version is going to be green light. Then you have your they may be processed down into like peanut butter mm-hmm. or like we said, like a virgin olive oil, something like that. It's going to be more like yellow, yellow light. light. Then your red light is going to be stuff like actually like corn oil, soybean oil. Because these are foods to get even get down to that oil form. Like you, you would never be able to... Like how much corn do you need to make to, corn oil? Exactly. It would be impossible. I need to know. You how, would have to have modern technology. How many years of corn? To do that. Right, so that, that's a good way to think about it. Typically, the eat less foods, highly processed foods, you would need modern technology to even get to that version, right? So, whereas the yellow light might be some foods processed down a little bit, but it's somewhat Bro. doable. Let's just throw a fun fact in here. To make 700 milliliters of oil, which is almost like a, a fifth, right? Yeah, like a, probably like a bottle. Right? Yeah, like a yeah. full bottle. 56 pounds of corn to make one single bottle. Yeah. So if that doesn't tell you that maybe we shouldn't be mm-hmm. <laughs> extracting that or, you know, we never would have been able to, to do that, then I don't know what will. Yeah. That's not, I didn't expect 56 pounds. And it's funny, and we'll get, this is going to be a tangent, do another episode on it, but I was thinking about this the other day. This, this is the thing with some of these, like, food, you know, The arguments people have. So let's take like a fast food meal. Yeah. Burger and fries. It just, it's crazy to me how the burger, the, so the meat and the potato have become 
the bad guy. Yeah. And then you see, but then the vegetable oil and the bun are somehow the good guy. Yeah, they get completely overlooked. Like, you know, you see the, who was it? One of the hard, new Harvard things came and like recommended a diet of majority like vegetable, unsaturated fat, mm-hmm. oils, and grains. And it's <laughs> like, so yeah, you, okay, if we're going to do that, then it's taking that meal. But the reality is the, the beef burger and the potato are whole food, been around forever, super nutrient dense. Yeah, and very filling. But then you take that potato and you fry it in vegetable oil. What you just saw is like, imp- yeah, like making that is it a never feat. it never existed in, in nature in those quantities and amounts. Yeah, it's, so that's a very highly highly processed food. And then the bun, the same thing. Yeah, a white bun. But then some people are like, oh, these are the foods that are okay, but skip the the stuff that's basically the burger patty and the and the potato. It just doesn't make sense. No, nah. and. There's barely any nutrition in the refined bun. And corn oil. In the corn oil. There's none. There's literally yeah, zero. There's really no redeeming qualities to it. As far as micronutrition. Yeah. Um, it's still calories. Yeah, and, and it's still tired. fat. Yeah, if you're starving and needed calories, it's calories. But compa- the micronutrition of the bun and the oil versus the it's no competition. beef burger and the fries. None. Yeah. And yet, again, somehow those are demonized, but we completely forget about the stuff that, you know, is, we'll say, hidden or yeah. just not as, as much in view. And I think that's important. But, yeah. We could do a whole episode That's on a, that. the politics of food. Yeah, that's another episode. We and, could do a politics um, of food episode. But, you, but the great thing is we all can choose, right? Yep. I mean, well, you could just have the entire meal. Yeah. Um, or you could choose, you know what, I'm going to focus on the nutritious whole foods or i'm gonna maybe fall into some politics skip that part but i'll have the oil and (laughs) refined bread refined bread please and now they're making that into quote unquote burgers (laughs) which the um beyond meat and stuff or Mm -hmm. most of the main ingredient is pea protein vegetable oil Stuff like that. Which, Thickeners. again, it's still food. Yeah. It's probably more like, should be treated like a treat because it's a highly processed. It's probably like a yellow it's light. highly processed. Yellow yeah. or, or red light. Um, it's definitely not like a whole food. No. So, again, that comes down to the individual to make, make your choice with that, you know. And there is animal welfare and those angles. Yeah. Um, so, and a lot of times people choose that over their own personal Which is health. fine. And they understand, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm making a less healthy food choice but to support my feelings Your on convictions yeah animal welfare or environmental food and environmental causes which are very valid yeah so and that's where yeah it's a very nuanced topic when we say the politics of food so you have to take all those things in and then weigh what's most important to you um, as far as like just straight up pure nutrition or environmental things animal welfare yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot, lot to think about. In. But just on a well, just nutrition standpoint, it's just that's I think a, a interesting like dichotomy of like let's take this fast food meal, but then kind of break it down a little into what it actually is and, and figure out what's then see the parts that are like villainized and the parts that are that get a free pass for yeah. some reason. Yeah. And then when ultimately, you know, adding those things, the oils the refined breads, the sauces. Even on the grand scheme, what they did was just make it way more calorie dense. And more, right? way more palatable. So you Tastes could way just better. have the full thing but eat appropriate portions mm-hmm. and end up in a pretty good place. So, Yeah, so if you eat a Big Mac, just eat it undistracted mm-hmm. so you can be a little more in tune with yourself. Yep. But then realize most of the issues are, so then you add your fries, which are, fried in oil, refined food, and mm-hmm. then you add a special Big Mac sauce, which is all refined stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you add a soda, which is refined, or you know, so we're adding... a milkshake. A milkshake. Um, you just add... These are all calories. Mm-hmm. And they add up quick. So now all of a sudden it's a 1,300 calorie meal mm-hmm. and leaves you wanting more... Yeah, and not, not satisfied. Yeah, um, because it is engineered... 
to make you that way to make the, to yeah. make you that way because again if you ate some cheese by itself or a beef burger patty plain by itself um all these things are going to be easy to regulate but then you add them all together so the hot, so the the beef burger with the melted cheese on top and then the soft bun with the special sauce and then the crispy hot salty fries, fries. Mm. and then the carbonated refreshing sugary drink and you're just i mean you can want it just from us describing it and your brain is just going it's nuts. having a blast yeah it's it's amazing because you're getting various textures various flavors various temperatures va- macronutrients i mean they're all blend really well together and it's just a, a home run it's slam. a concerto yeah, slam dunk for your brain i mean just it's can kind of be that simple yeah like food just tastes t- too good all it the time tastes too good yeah we have we have tasty food available uh, available for cheap yeah everywhere and i and i i understand why like why not get it mm-hmm. you know for, for a lot of people like it tastes good yeah. it's cheaper and what does that come back to the why we're eating mm-hmm. and now all of a sudden it makes us happy in that moment yep so now well we it is right down the street oh it is affordable yeah, it's convenient. Let it's me go quick. Get this. You don't have to wait a long time to get it. But now it becomes maybe a crutch. I'm sad. This is going to make me happy temporarily. Yep. You go get your Taco Bell every boom, night boom. or whatever. So you see where even if we were adjusting the, the what, if you don't address that, that why, it doesn't matter. You're going to end up back, back, back at Taco Bell. There because your brain's <laughs> telling you. Yeah. Mm. It all weaves together. I know it's three separate episodes, but it definitely all does you know, work very closely together. So, all right, give them all a listen. Let us know what you think, if it helps, or if you have a success with any of the tactics and Mm -hmm. strategies. Yeah, we'd love to know. Thanks for listening. See you. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at coastalfitnessva.com or garydeagle.com. We'll see you next time.